Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Todd Talk, where we take teaching theory and turn it into teaching practice. In keeping with this year's theme of enrichment activities that you can use with gifted students in order to challenge them and to think it at higher levels, um, I'm going to provide another tool for your toolbox today on what you can use with students to uh, challenge them, to take things deeper within the lesson itself, and for things that they could be doing after the lesson uh, that would also be challenging for them. And so we're going to focus on what are co called choice boards. So choice boards are just as they sound. They are a um, litany of activities that students can choose from. So unlike most assignments where students are given the assignment that they have to do and they, they, they have no choice in the matter, choice boards allows more choice. Uh, and this is a good thing because they're still learning what you want them to learn, but they feel like they have some say so in the matter that they are uh, you know, getting con to control their fate in the, the classroom a little bit. And so this can be very valuable for students who have difficulty, you know, seeing why they're doing certain things um, or why they're being asked to do certain things. And in this case, they get to choose for themselves and because they've chosen it themselves. They're that, that much more invested in it. So I'm going to show you examples of eight choice boards um, that accomplish various tasks. And they're very general choice boards. Choice boards are very um, uh manipulative. In other words, you can change it to, to fit your age level, your, your subject area, your intelligence level, whatever you need to do to fit your particular classroom. Uh, you can change the choice board to, um, to reflect that. Uh, but what I'm going to show you these examples of uh, will help you to kind of give you a backbone for creating your own choice boards, or you can just use the choice boards as is. Here's an example of a very simple choice board. Uh, where There's not a lot that's clearly defined here other than the method that students are going to use to show mastery. So in here, students, if, if I were asking students to do a, a unit on space and I wanted them to show me what they had learned, students could look at this choice board and they could choose to, to how they're going to do that. They, it could be a demonstration of some sort. They could write an essay. They could give a presentation. They could give a performance. They could take a test. So there's, there's all sorts of choices on here. And what this does is, because it's not so clearly defined, the students have a bit of freedom within these choices to determine what that's going to look like. So if a student is do, one student may do a demonstration uh, and demonstrate something differently than someone else does. So even within these choices, there are choices as well. Um, and so I, I would use this for a unit and I would put, just put this up on the board and tell students that they, in order to show me mastery, they could choose any way they wanted. And so more traditional students tended to to pick the test um, and, or an essay or a research paper. Um, there are other ones who were maybe a little more uh, performance-based, would do a presentation or a demonstration. Some that were maybe more artistic might choose a portfolio or, or an exhibition of some sort. So it, it allowed them to kind of tap into the, their own strengths and what they were comfortable with doing. So what you see here is a tic-tac-toe choice board. And so as it reads there, kids would complete a row of three squares, whether it's across, diagonally, or down. If students want to go through the middle, then they have student choice. So in that, students would get to um, totally make up what they're going to do that, that would show mastery. And so if a student were to um, do this, they again, they were choosing three activities. So let's start at the top left-hand corner. So changing the setting of the novel, uh, describe how this setting would change the story and why. So that would be something that they would create. You know, they could either illustrate something or, or write something or film something but that allows them to do that. What do you think about the motives of at least three of the main characters? What do you, why do you think they drive these people? So here is they're just going to have to look at three specific characters and what their motivations are. And then lastly is choose a passage and find 10 words you do not know that you think are important to what is being discussed in the passage, making a glossary so that others can reference it or create flashcards for them. And so this is a fairly simple task of finding 10 unfamiliar words and creating a glossary for it. Out of those three activities, there are three different levels of thinking going on here. So if you look at the first one, change the setting, that is creating. That's a higher level of thinking skill. If you look at the one about thinking about the motives of the characters, this might be application um, or understanding uh, because they are simply using context clues from the book that, that, that um, allows them to, to arrive at their answers. They might use a little analysis, 
if they have to make assumptions about things, but mostly logically, they're going to think a certain way. Then lastly is choosing a passage and finding 10 words. This is the remembering. So just finding words and remembering what those words are, which is a lower level. So at least one of these activities that students are going to be doing is going to be higher level, which is why a choice board like this can be a good thing because it allows students to scaffold up. So students for doing this, they might start with the, the, the far right one first, get a, get, remember what the terms are, then go into the motives where there's a little scaffolding up a little bit more and then up to the higher levels which is changing the setting and so students could choose what it is that they want to do here here is a choice board that is specific to a very particular topic so in this case english language arts and so in this case they don't have to fill out a certain row or they don't have to do a certain uh, you know, sequence of doing these you might you might say choose one, you might say choose several. Uh, it's totally up to you as the teacher. Uh, but all these activities are activities that are more hands-on or thought-provoking. So for instance, um, if you look, if we're going from the, the left-hand corner down, so write a letter to someone famous. So in this case, they have to role play um, you know, that they're writing to this person that's famous and, and what, are, what are they gonna put in their letter. The next one is create a Facebook profile for one of the main characters along with a few appropriate posts. So this makes it timely so students can, so say students are reading Huck Finn. Now what would Huck Finn's Facebook profile look like? What, what would posts be about? Would they be about, you know, the injustice of slavery or the South or, you know, they, they could be some really interesting posts that they, students can come up with, but they have to be creative in order to do that. The next one is make a comic strip that provides the main concept of the story. So students get to be artistic in that they're drawing a, uh, you know, something and they're have to, to, but they have to also comprehend what it is they're learning. So they're putting it all together. And then last is plan a, last is plan a, plan a summary for what the sequel of the book would be about. So in this case, students would just have to write a description. They can take it as far as they want. They could just write a simple description. They could write a, a chapter. They could film a book trailer. There's all sorts of things kids could do within that. Um, but again, they're not necessarily going in these rows. Uh, you may say, choose three of these. Uh, you may say, choose one of these. But all of these activities, as you look them over, ask students to create something to be using it at a higher level than just simply remembering or understanding something. Here is a math choice board. So in this case, um, the choice board takes math and breaks it into four parts. Mastery, application, taking it to the next level, and honing your skills. And as you can see, they are scaffolding up. The M activities are just basic activities. So being able to explain the rules for adding decimals or watch the Khan Academy video on decimals and summarize what you learned from it. This is basic understanding of the concept itself. The A is then taking it to the next level, having them apply this understanding. So either completing problems or they have a real life situation with money where they have to use decimals. And so that's applying the actual concept to something. T is taking it to the next level. So in this case, kids must create their own problems, 10 of them to be exact, that use the rules of decimals. And they have to come up with the answer key as well. So they're creating. Uh, the next one is they take a look at the sample problem and try to find where a mistake was made correcting it. So you give them a problem that has a mistake in it, and then students have to analyze it and try to figure out where the mistake was made and what could have been changed to make it better. And so this is asking them to think at a higher level. Then honing your skills is taking it to the, the utmost level, which is they have to take what they, this whole concept, and they have this understanding of it, and now they have to put it into play. So in this case, they would either play, create a game where participants must use decimals in order to play, so the, the concept must be maybe simple, but they, they have to have a good understanding of it in order to be able to create the game. Or another one is you are given $172.82, buy yourself a back to school wardrobe. So students could get online at a store that they like and try to figure out how and budget themselves. And this teaches a couple of things. It teaches them decimals, how to, how to uh, meet a budget, how to plan for what you're going to buy. Because if you buy something that's, a, you know, a pair of boots that is $150, you've only left yourself like, you know, $22 to buy the rest of your wardrobe. So that wouldn't make sense. So this is asking kids to, to look at them, you know, the management of, the, of what they're going to do as well. You can take your menu boards and, and we've shown examples of scaffolding already, but you can be 
more transparent about the scaffolding. So in this case, students look at this menu board and it's set up like a menu. They have an appetizer, they have to do one of those two tasks. Um, choose a side dish, dish same thing. Um, the main dish, and then they could choose to do a dessert or not. They don't have to necessarily. So in the choosing an appetizer, these are the lower level skills of remembering and understanding. So whatever kids are gonna do in this section, it's just going to be the basic concept of what it is they're learning. When they're getting into choosing a side dish, they're applying or analyzing. Um, and so they are having to dig a little deeper. They're having to you know, apply it to their own lives so that they can see where this might fit. For the main dish, this is where we're really getting to the higher levels of thinking, according to Bloom's, where they may create something or evaluate something so that they have a, you know, they can show that they have a true understanding of it and are able to use it in another situation. Um, and then lastly is the dessert. This And dessert in this case is a reflection. It's always good to have kids reflect. And so uh, they can reflect upon what they learned from the lesson that they hadn't expected to. And so students would choose one of these two options, but it scaffolds up and it eventually propels them into a, a point where they're thinking a little higher using Bloom's taxonomy as a kind of our guiding point. You could choose to set up your menu boards like this, where it's based on the multiple intelligences. So the multiple intelligences are natural, naturalist, visual, spatial, body kinesthetic, interpersonal, musical, rhythmic, verbal, linguistic, interpersonal, and logical, mathematical. So under each of those activities, kids could choose one of those activities. And, and they're not gonna do all nine of those. Um, the, by the way, the one in the, the center, by the way, is student created, where they choose a product that is not on the choice board and they have to kind of create it themselves. But the other ones are based on the eight multiple intelligences. And so students can find what their strength is. So if a student is really visual spatial, they can pick something underneath that. So they may do a foldable or a board game or a collage in order to show their visual spatial um, intelligences. Um, they could choose verbal linguistic, where they do a trifold or brochure or a review of some sort. And so students can find, because students are going to gravitate towards the multiple intelligence that is their strength or is one that they feel like they're pretty good at. And so in this case, they're going to be able to choose something that fits into their wheelhouse and they're going to be able to produce something that would be better than if you had kind of forced them to do a certain thing that wasn't one of their strengths. Um, and so the multi, you can use a multiple choices, multiple intelligences choice board. Here's the I finish now, what do I do choice board. So in this case, students would roll a die, a six sided die to determine what they're gonna do now that their work is finished. Um, and this does a couple of things. It, it's not, it doesn't become the responsibility of the teacher to assign them something when they're done. Because a lot of times what teachers do is they just give students more work. Um, and this shouldn't be viewed as more work. It should be viewed as enrichment or work that is going to further their understanding of what it is they're learning. And so they roll that dice and some of these activities are very basic like silently reading, working on brain teasers, um, you know, playing a game uh, from the game closet. But some are asking them to, to create such as when they go to the STEM corner and build something or if they write a book or illustrate a graphic novel. And so and in this, students would roll the dice and then it would it would determine the activity that they were going to do. Here's another uh, menu board for um, those who finish early. This is an enrichment activities. And so you can see that the headings of dig, project, master, partner, troubleshoot, plan, extend, reflect, re refresh. So each one of these is asking students to extend what they, it is that they've done. It's, so it's not, it, all of these are at higher levels um, of rigor and, and thinking where students are having to go a little bit further. So in the digging, obviously that's an obvious one. Kids are gonna be digging a little bit deeper into what they learn. So if they learn the basic concept of, you know, um, how, what a, how a conjunction works, then they may have to dig a little bit deeper and to see, you know, what are some various ways that conjunctions could work or that they could use conjunctions. Uh, the troubleshooting one is asking students to list problems with the lesson and how to fix it. So this allows them to put it back on you and to kind of critique how the lesson was and how it might be, be better. And this does a couple of things. It, it forces the students to analyze what went on and how they could have learned it better, but it also gives you feedback. On, they may have some great ideas that they provide for you where you can say, oh, you know, you know, I hadn't thought about that that way. And I'm glad that they pointed that out. Uh, refreshing is taking a quick nap to, re to refresh your brain. I know this doesn't sound like uh, higher level thinking, but what that does is frees up the kid's mind so they can do higher level thinking later on. Um, I think sometimes, you know, we have kids sitting for eight hours a day and they can get their mind can get spent 
one doing that. And so they're not prepared in their later classes to give as much higher level responses as maybe their earlier classes. But taking a little nap, and studies have shown by taking a little nap and kind of rebooting your brain, uh, this can then lead to, to more productive um, responses and less and learning later on in the day. Uh, so this is a real simple one. Um, there are other ones in here like, you know, asking kids to plan um, an extension lesson, um, asking kids to work on a project about this lesson. A partner is if someone else finishes early and they trade the work and critique one another. And so they're giving feedback to one another. But these are all things. So kids, a kid could finish their work you know, they have this menu board and they, they're choosing one of these or maybe a couple of these in order to extend what they've learning to enrich uh, what they, it is that they have been learning. So there you have it. Eight choice boards that you can use with your students to enrich them, to challenge them, and to extend their thinking. All things that we want to do with our gifted students. And not just our gifted students, but with any students that are able to handle that next level of learning. Uh, it's where we don't want them to stop because that's where the lesson stops. We want it to stop where their thinking and where their excitement and their motivation takes them. Um, and so you can use these choice boards in your classroom. Um, I, all eight of them I have put on my website, which is www.thegiftedguy.com. I've included a link here. You can download those menu, those choice boards, and you can manipulate them any way that you see fit. Um, the one thing I want to end with, though, is know that choice is not just about giving students choice. It's about making them part of the learning process. And so you want to make sure that when you have activities on your, men your menu boards, they're not so specific that kids have little to no freedom. Because uh, you want to give them some freedom, some leeway in order to be creative, in order to be able to show what their you know, special skills are, uh, to be able to show you the levels of thinking they're capable of going to. Um, and so more open-ended uh, menu board choices is always good because I, I never wanted to limit my students to my own imagination, to my own thinking, because I, I realized quite quickly that they can think of things much better than I can and be more way, way more creative than I can. So I wanted to put part of that choice on, on their lap and make them responsible for their learning.